Cannons. 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 What do you know? We got Travis. Hey. <laughs> we <laughs> tip my fedora. You did tip your little fedora there. It's <laughs> not a fedora. <laughs> We've got Tom. Yep. And we got Drunken Larry. Hello. And from Cardboard Fortress Games. You like the way I did that? You did. That I was like close. That. You I almost lost out. it there for you a second. Yeah, you almost said Cardboard Box Games. I'm wearing it. I did. Because I was going to talk about the hat and I kind of well, skipped well, it. Well, right. From Cardboard Fortress Games, we have the hat. No, oh, sorry. And Nicole Klein, are we supposed to say? Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Hey, yeah, that's good. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I, I screwed up that. I, I didn't get my whole home address, though, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we already have that. Rob wasn't, Rob wasn't sure what he wanted to talk about more. Introduce you or talk about the great hat that he won at B-Fig. Yep. I have my hat on from B-Fig. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I, have a, I have it hanging in the studio I so I can torment Larry with it. I have, him. like, the best, like, <laughs> Rob victorious pose wearing that hat. I want to blow up to, like, poster size. Because he seriously, he looks Why so don't we common. just make a cardboard stand-up of Rob wearing that? Why don't we make... <laughs> why don't we make wallpaper and then wallpaper Larry's house with it? No! <laughs> yes, I like that idea no. even better. All right, so, Rob. What are we talking about on today's show? We're talking about games. Which particular game are we talking about? We're talking about Resistor. All right. Which, uh, we've been on a card game kick for a while now. I think it started with, I think Travis brought uh, brought in uh, a game. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Oh, for Christ's sake. What's it about? That was my I, fault. I don't know. Yeah, it was a game. There it was this game. Involved. It was Uno. Uno. Travis brought <laughs> <called> Uno. <laughs> And uh, we all started playing. What well, I say? I like the first guy to ever discover Uno. You know? uh, it's true. Yeah. Dude, yeah, this game is called about. Uno. Right? It's <laughs> Spanish for one. Like it's important. You know, my dad's Whoa. race car was I play it regularly Uno in the eighties. What? Uh, is that a true thing? That is a true thing. What? My dad's race car was sponsored by Uno in the 80
that's the only reason you guys are the show. Yeah, just so he can talk about how he walloped Larry. Can I mention? So, So, Rob, could you tell me (laughs) how you walloped Larry? I gotta tell you, Larry didn't even score a point. Oh! No, Tell me more. So, does it concern you about the game mechanics that it can, like, set up so that someone can get whopped so quickly? (laughs) You wanna go into a bit of detail about what... Yeah, let's let's talk about what the game is. Let's actually... Let's actually... (laughs) Yeah, can we actually talk about the game? Why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, about how the game works? I'll, I'll, I'll let I'll let her handle it. She's writing the instructions now, so now I'm going to put her on the spot. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing these instructions. Um, so it's a two-player two player competitive card game where you're two supercomputers um, fighting each other. Basically, you are you want to launch your nukes, but you don't want the other computer to launch their nukes too, so you're trying to stop them so you can launch your nukes undefeated. Uh, all the cards are double-sided, and they have red and blue lines on them. So... If you're the red player, deep red, you want to get a red line all the way across the board into the blue player's face. And if you're the blue player, BLU 9000, then you want to get the blue line across. And each player has two cards in their hands, and you can use the front of your own cards and the back of your enemy's cards. And uh, you manipulate the board to try to get your lines all the way across. That's pretty much... That's good. That's the same. That's the same. Yeah. Yeah. In my case, one of us was a supercomputer, and the other one was a Commodore VIC-20. We did did talk about the... The war game esque, yeah, I you know feel to it. The eighties. One player was playing a supercomputer, the other player was playing a victim unit. Yes, basically <laughs> the victim, victim twenty. Unit, <laughs> 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 victim model. <laughs> it's true. All right, so where'd you come up with the idea for the game? What 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 inspired this particular game? Was it the movie War Games? No, no, no. We we made the game at a at a game jam. We um we kind of hang out and associate with some video game designers here in Philly. Associate with what's what's what you say? <laughs> it's like you're slumming it. It's <laughs> <laughs> like you're meeting in a back room to be around them. You know, it's like a modern uh, speaking. We had a game jam one night and uh, we decided to take a swing at it. So we made we made the game at that. Uh, you know, you know they're all programmers. We didn't, we don't know how to program, so we had to make a card game out of <laughs> paper and pencils. Whatever's laying around. How did you yeah. come up with the uh, mechanics of the game? Because uh, one of the things that struck me was the way that it was pretty easy to remember how the turns work because you came up with the cards that demonstrate what uh, what part of the round you're in. Mm. Um. Well, the, what was the game jam? 48 hours? So, they, so they, it was a 12-hour jam. Oh, 12 hours. You could only work on the game for 12 hours, but you had a week to make the game? Yeah, so you weren't allowed to spend more than 12 hours time. So, we, you know, we had to keep everything fairly simple. We couldn't get any anything, you know, really complex or in-depth. And also, we had to kind of, you know, tailor it to uh, people who, who are used to playing games with a, with a fairly easy introduction and... Yeah, you know, it couldn't be too complex for them to, to learn at this at the moment either. Let's video explain my victory. <clears throat> yeah, I guess what I'm saying is video game players have short attention spans, and uh, if, if they can't wait, get in what are we talking minutes, about? Hey, probably, I wrote, what just... are we? Wait, what happened? Where yeah. am I? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That actually is that is pretty right, right though. It's actually a card game that appeals to video game players pretty <laughs> hey, strongly. So? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to start to beat some boots on it. Yeah, that's going on the box. (laughs) (laughs) A card game for video game players. Excellent. (laughs) Rob Benson from Guys Game Studio. I'm just going to say totally a video game. (laughs) (laughs) I like the, uh, the, the, I want to say, Indian component to it. Where you're you're looking at the back of the year. So when you're playing the game... Where you give them what? Blankets that no, are... No, no, uh, Have you ever played that poker? Yeah, yeah. Right, well, come now. on, we used to I know play it's it. not politically correct to say that anymore, but that was the name of the game, right? <laughs> but so, but so you know everybody else's card, but you don't know your own. And so when you're holding the cards, you you don't know the back of your card. Right. But, which actually is a legitimate gameplay piece because they're both they're double-sided mm. so there's there's two lines on one side two lines on the other side or maybe even a a, a, a resistor that you know could could cause other things it's kind of like a special card but there's stuff on the back stuff on the front and you're only allowed to look at the stuff on the front to you your opponent is looking at the back stuff and so when they lay you lay a card down 
they can, they, flip it. they can flip it, and they know what that card is. Ah. So if you got a if they good remember memory, what the damn card was, yeah, yeah. After a long day and a few beers, it's it gets tougher. <laughs> <laughs> long day and a few <laughs> beers, huh? Paying attention while playing. Yeah, it, that was Larry's problem. He was hungover. Yeah, he was. Yeah, Larry. we were. <laughs> How'd you guys like beef fig? It was good. It was nice. Just a little off topic there. Okay, I gotta ask now. So, is this Cardboard Fortress's first introduct or first game out on the market, or will be the first game out on the market? Yeah, yes. hopefully. Right. <laughs> Are you guys? Everything goes okay. That is the hope. I, think, <laughs> I imagine. I think last time we talked to you, we brought this up, but uh, the recording quality was so bad at Beefig that we uh, decided to redo it. But uh, are you guys doing a Kickstart on it? Yeah, we want to launch a Kickstarter hopefully in January. Right now we're just talking to printers and setting up our company officially and filling out paperwork and writing instructions and not playing video games. Yeah, we're totally not going to play Borderlands for the next 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous of what you're not doing. Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to be serious adults with many oh, responsibilities. Yeah, what do you think is the uh, What do you think is the hardest part of designing a game? Oh god, the instructions. Writing the instructions. Yeah, to be very inclusive. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot like. Yeah, it's I do. Um, pulls. I do technical documentation as part of my job, and I hate doing that. So oh god, do you, you want to work for us? I don't we want to work. Pay. We made instructions for our game, and then we found out they were terrible recently, so we have to redo them entirely. So, so we did the instructions, and we had our friend who worked, he used to work for AEG, and now he works for Aiello, or Yellow, however you pronounce it. He writes their instructions, and he went over our instructions and, like, rewrote them, and then we had other people look at them, and we were feeling pretty solid, and we sent them off to IndieCade and Boston Fig, and oh my god, when we got our feedback, it was brutal. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think he work. One so, of the guys at Boston Fig who read our instructions literally walked up to me and said, your instructions are bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 man. That's not very Boston thing like to do. I thought, you were, I thought you would have cried. And I was like, no, at this point I pretty much know. <laughs> so, yeah. I, like, so we like deconstructed them. I took every single section and rewrote it as a single sentence, which was really a challenge. And now I like from there, I like rebuilt the whole thing. We also have a guy from Gamecraft for helping us. We took all the feedback that we got, and I try not to cry while I read it. This is why I have ice cream, guys, because I like write a section, cry into some ice cream. <laughs> you know, yeah, so that, so the part of making a game that isn't fun is all of the stuff that you have to do besides making the game. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like designing a game is super fun, and, and playing and, like, trying to work out the puzzle that is, like, making a fun game, that's all really fun, but then, um, that's about eight, that's about 20% of it, I'd I say. say 8%. No, that's about 20% of the whole process, and then the other 80% is, like, figuring out how to make it cheap to sell to people and make sure people understand how to play it. And Remembering to feed yourself and do the laundry. Yeah, all the, all the boring <laughs> stuff that you don't want to do. It, it, and your game, from when we talked to B-Fig, had a, has a particular challenge as far as like keeping the price down related to the box. Maybe you can go into that. Yeah, we have... Um, so since our game involves... Uh, I don't I really know how to state this. This is a problem with writing instructions. We have a lot of perspective problems, right? So if you're holding a card up and uh, that card's double-sided and you're only allowed to see your side of the card, the side that's facing you, you have to make it so that you don't accidentally see the back side um, of the card. Which means that when you draw a card out of the deck, well, I should say your enemy can't see your side of the card either. So when you draw a card out of the deck, it has to be vertical, which means the deck has to be standing up. Um, so... One of the things we came around to, and, and fitting in with the whole supercomputer, you know, 80s kind of theme, we've made our box such that it, it kind of acts like a like a Super Nintendo cartridge almost. You know what I mean? Like the the deck plugs into the main box, so what? it's standing up. Yeah. And uh, yeah. this yeah. means it has like a three part. It's just a card game, you know, but that means it has a three part like uh, cardboard box going on that's presented some problems. That there's a hole in the box, which is you know, out of the norm for, for board games in general. Yeah, like people, we, when we talked to one of the manufacturers at Gen Con, they were like, well, this hole in the, this window in the front is kind of worrisome because what if, you know, it gets messed up when you're shipping it and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't, that's a new thing that I don't want to think about. 
<laughs> let's, not worry, let's not worry. Let's not worry about control. shipping. <laughs> don't, don't you worry about that. Yeah. I'm gonna hand deliver these, dude. <laughs> I love that box. We're hand them. We didn't. We're not succeeding. <laughs> <laughs> I love that box. Plugging yeah, the cartridge person. in. You know. <laughs> Larry called it a cartridge again. Yeah. yeah. It's, it. it's what I do, and I accept it. So I'm moving on. Yeah. Are we talking about Larry's cartridges? Yeah, it's Larry's <laughs> cartridges. Do you we want a Peggle? Apparently I say that wrong too. You know, this is one of the new Peggle. <laughs> is it? Yeah, Peggle. Like the video game where you uh, This is, um... No, no, going to set a Kaggle. This is one of those games that you really couldn't do on an iPad, really. Hey, that's a whole other thing. Unless you're set to multiplayer only. I guess you... Well, the, the, thing about, the thing about putting it on the iPad is that it loses a couple things. It loses the whole, like... Card game aspect? Well, it loses the, it loses the physical part of it, but it also loses well, the... Well, you can like, play where every iPad's one card, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like well, you you could actually uh, program it for the old razor, and then one side could be on the front of the razor. Right. Well, like one of the good things about the game is that when you take a card out of someone else's hand, you're really messing with them. And when like when you do the draw on trash, like you're put you're like if you draw a card and you decide to put like some people are like, oh, I don't want to put it, I don't want to put this card in their hand, I don't want to give this card to them. But if you put that card in your hand, they can use it just as easily as if it's right. It doesn't hand. actually make a difference, but it's a psychological. Yeah, thing. there's like a psychological yeah. aspect to actually holding the cards because you're like, no, I'm not giving you this card. Oh wait, you can just take this card out of my hand anyway. Yeah, people think, seem to think that if they're holding the card, that those are their cards. When in our game, you can use cards from either player's hand. So really, there's just one hand. But I think I'm gonna stop saying that because uh, hand, 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 hand. I'm gonna stop saying that there's only one hand between you because people like to think about it as like this is mine and that's theirs. <laughs> but no, <laughs> very possessive about it. Especially Larry, but he usually keeps an extra deck up his sleeve. So yeah, Larry cheats. He Larry cheats. Larry that's cheats. All that's what about they it. accuse me of, just because they lose a lot. <laughs> <laughs> just because you tried to play an Uno card. Injury. Whatever. I like your scenario of um, buy two decks and, and like rig rig the deck so it has cards in your favor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> buy two uh, decks, then win he, three. He would just keep one up his sleeve. I, I like that scenario, and, and completely not for the reason that you bought two decks to buy. Yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't be that. You know, I don't know. I would think that would be really hard in this game to like know, like, okay, I need a, I need a blue line that attaches here, because there's, like, attach points, there's, what would we say, there's three or four attach points? Four. There's four, yeah. Four possible attach yeah. points. So, you have to have everything line up with the different attach points, and you'd be like, no, no. <laughs> what are you doing, Larry? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> Shut up! I'm Spider-Man. You know, it's like, you know, like if you were to play poker, you know, an ace up your sleeve is almost always useful, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I got to be a double blue. That's mm. right. <laughs> what am I going to do no with this? Worries. I'm red. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> got to flip that. <laughs> Nice. Make sure to always change what color you play so they're unprepared for it. <laughs> That's Fort <right. laughs> Larry 101. <laughs> Larry, there's no yellow in this. What the heck is going on here? <laughs> oh no, I thought it was going to by accident. <laughs> it's Luke's lightsaber. Decks. Right. <laughs> so, what? It's so what's it like? You know, I'm just imagining Larry cheating at this. And it's <laughs> no, we're planning how Larry's going to cheat. Yeah. We're like crowdsourcing. We're it. really helping him. Right. Is what we're doing. I'm definitely planning on how you're going to buy extra. I mean, cheat. <laughs> <laughs> Those are so I didn't see, like, see you guys post pictures where it's like a full resistor board, and then right in the middle is like a poker card with lines drawn. <laughs> yeah. Wrong size, the wrong color, no more. <laughs> I didn't know bicycle had a hand. I want a Kickstarter level, the cheat, the cheat level. You get two decks. <laughs> I need a secret code for this card. No, we call it the Larry level. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, you're right after. Forget it. I'm not ah. gonna start on you. You're right after the uh, angry video game nerd video game. You're right. Yeah, so you're so distribution wise, wise, are you looking at uh, putting this into game stores, or will you do it from the website, or both? Well, we definitely want to get it on the game store shelves. I, I kind of feel like, um, you know, board games and card games 
I don't know why I separate those. They're the same thing. Board games really live and die in the community at the at the game shops. I mean, it's hard to avoid that. I mean, if you are Cards Against Humanity and you kind of have that steamroller effect happening, that's fine. But otherwise, they're selling in stores now. I know now they're in stores. But yeah, but, but but you're right. For the longest time they weren't. They got lucky and, like you said, got to that cr a critical mass point where the hype just spread throughout the community. Oh yeah, I, I mean I love that game, but it's definitely running. It was running a crest of. of Hipster cred, I guess that's what I call it. <laughs> that's as good as that. Whereas, yeah. no, but you're right. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say you're wrong. Game, you know, they're going to have to be, you got to be in the stores. I feel like you got to be in the store, too. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you on that. It, it then course. really is where people go, get a chance to experience the game, play it for the first time. Like most card games, it's good to get your hands on it first, actually get a chance to try it out before you buy it. Right. And the game yeah, shows well, why you do that. Try it before you buy it, and also I want people to be able to buy it, rip it open, and play it right then and there, possibly with a stranger who might then also want to buy it, you know? There's a... There's right, a right or proposition, one of the well, two. There's a thing that <laughs> we do here locally, and I don't know I don't know that I see it in other places, but a lot of our pubs have board games in them. Yeah. yeah. That's starting to happen here, yeah. yeah. We also have board games, like, stores. I, we, we have uh, board games more at coffee shops than bars. This, well, we have another. This, this is Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. This is Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. Most of our it's a coffee, coffee shop. And most yeah. of our coffee shops <laughs> serve yeah, I boots. Feel like they might right, they they're just too, pubs. Just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rochambeau, yeah, the Irish coffee. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Yeah, for real. Actually, yeah. I actually think this would be a good pub game. Two people. Yeah, actually, it would, it be, would be a good, good pub game. game. Yeah. Because you, you could get the uh, bartender to play. We, we rate everything about how, by how drinkable the game is. <laughs> if we can play on a hangover. Every game is good. Excuse me. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> wow. Dude, there's totally an Uno deck, like, right up there. And? I'm just going to say Uno. Rob has like, got such a bad case of ADD tonight. This is going <laughs> to be the best show yet. <laughs> Rob just keeps going, Blue car! You know what's bad when Blue I'm deck. doing that? Yes. You know? It's right. not a good episode when I'm doing that. You're supposed that, to be our, our leader. <laughs> yes. Our, you're or supposed apparently to be our keeps us on track. I started on the big O a little early. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I like yeah. that. That's good. Yep, 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 yep. yep. So, so how'd you go? Uh, 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 since we, I asked you this at BFA, but it, again, the sound didn't come out. So, how did you come up with Cardboard Fortress? Uh, I don't know. Coming up with a with a company name is always it's a real bitch because you know, like you want to you want it to be really personal, but then <laughs> you just don't have anything on the tip of your brain right then and there. Yeah, we don't want to be like Anthony and Nicole Games because we were like, what if we break up? Then it would be like twice as hard. Okay, that would be awkward. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> child together in this fucking company. Right. <laughs> I can just imagine you walking into a game store crying. Why? You know? I get Cardboard <laughs> Fortress on the weekend. Just take the and out and replace it with like an X. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, either that or like it just one of the names gets crossed just, out. You know, I, I kind of felt like Cardboard Fortress captured a whole like uh, concept of making games with your bare hands, you know, cutting up paper, cardboard, drawing on stuff. And uh, also that sort of like use your imagination as a child kind of scenario. Also, that web address was not already taken. <laughs> hey, that is a perfectly yeah. good reason to choose that name. <laughs> what address <laughs> was that? <laughs> we are going about it. So you already have a website. What is your website? It's cardboardfortressgames.com. And what can our what can our listeners find on that website? Um, just some words right now. Maybe just, a couple pictures. Just us babbling about being at conventions. You talk. You, you talked about. Hey, you talked about going to Gen Con. That right yeah. there is worth going this, to the website to for. This box is actually there. Yes, there's pictures yeah, of that yeah. cool box. <laughs> we'll go. I'm wearing it we on my head. The, um, we it's went nice. To Gen Con. Then we went to PAX uh, East. We were in the Indie Kid. Um, I'm sorry. I like PAX East, so I always say PAX East. <laughs> we went to PAX Prime. We were in the uh, Indie Mega Booth tabletop area at that, and then we went to Boston Fig. Did we have something in between? I went to Boston Game Loop before. Oh, you that. went to Buck Game Loop, right, right? Yeah, I went. I, I was in Boston, then Indianapolis, then Seattle, then back to Boston. Dang. Wow. We keep getting yeah. asked on. Uh, we keep getting asked on Twitter. Are you guys gonna be at Gamescon? And it's like. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we'll be right there. Oh. Gonna be a Tokyo Game Show. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. Be right you want pay for our tickets? Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll be They're there. like you know, twelve of us. After Pack Plus right. Right. And I'll just head out to Tokyo. That's <laughs> right. Have you, have you, it's kind of nice. They they have a game and a toy collection already. So that's. 
<laughs> cardboard. <laughs> cardboard hats. You know, Rob is their toy <laughs> You know, you really should just sell these cardboard hats. <laughs> I know, everybody keeps telling us that. Yeah, profit margin would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Eight, sales are up 8,000%. Eight thousand percent. <laughs> and see, <laughs> the biddy of it is you can ship it in itself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I no dog or head to the box. <laughs> yeah, imagine how cheap that is. <laughs> yeah. You have to carve you have to carve the label off, but otherwise it's all, it's already the I goal. totally have hat head. I have square hat head. <laughs> you have right? box head. Yes, bo box head. <laughs> box head. Yeah. We had so many people come to us at Boston Pig and say, What are the hats about? And I was like, Oh, it's just our company. And she's like, Oh, I thought it was a game. Are the hats part of the game? Are the hats are <laughs> That's your next game. Yeah, you you need to make a game incorporating those hats. Would, yeah, we're, we're people love like headgear. The <laughs> There's your game name. People love headgear. <laughs> That's my game company right there. So, I wonder if we get some cross promotion with uh, Max Gentleman. That'd be awesome. The game where your mm -hmm. your beefy dudes with hats flying through the air and trying to get. You're just trying hat. to catch. <laughs> Have you guys seen that game? No, no, I have not seen that game. It's amazing. It's called Max Gentleman. Yeah, and you're just trying to catch hats and dodge like beers. I don't know. You're trying to catch hats. You're also trying to grab beers as they're tossed you down the bar. All right. And you're yes. To not get the so like extreme tapper. That's Thursday. <laughs> I love tapper. Thursday. <laughs> Shocker. Shocker. All right, I'm gonna search this game out now. Yes. <laughs> All right. This awesome. Is awesome. Game. It's for real. You actually throw hats at I'm just kidding. Oh, no, I was good with that. I, I, I was, I, now I was getting happened. Yeah, I had that vision in my head. If I, I know, I was seeing it too. <laughs> All right. All right. So a graduation tradition turned into a game. No. No. <laughs> no, yeah, I just uh, the the, the, cr the crickets that. in the background were just amazing. About how long is a playtime game uh, for Resistor? For me, about two seconds, man. I kicked his yeah, ass. Preparing, <laughs> oh, sorry, Larry. You're on slower, folks. For, for, for about the... how long is a play session of Resistance? Yeah, it really depends. I would say it averages 20 minutes. Uh, Anthony and I can play a game in like 5 to 10, and some people like deliberate over every single move, so it'll take them like 30, but... Uh, I hate those people. Just make a move. Uh, tell me the truth. Do you really just hate the crap out of people who like take way too long to make a move? Sometimes I like start twitching and I want to tell them what to do, <laughs> or sometimes I just start helping them if they get over, like, because sometimes, some people just get straight up overwhelmed. They're like, eh. Lines are not everybody's specialty, all right? Oh, you know what, though? Some I, of us don't need a I think you should probably get a timer. Oh, yeah, we could do that. Oh, yeah, yeah put like, well, oh, oh, my God, an egg timer? Yeah. <laughs> it, I, I actually find it, like, uh, when people take a long time, use that time to plot. And then you do your move like boom, and it freaks yeah. them out. Right yeah. <laughs> you made a mistake. <laughs> no, no, that's the best part about slow players, players actually, because they give you extra time to like, oh, right. This and is coming from Larry. Yeah. <laughs> Three different eventualities here. Just, okay, that's the one I wanted. Yes, yes, right. yes, more to the point. When we play haunting house, Suck you've uh, you've occasionally taken a half hour to make a move. Yes, you, Larry. Larry. I usually don't say a lot. You usually Half win, but hour? still. No. Yeah, because it's an we endurance were, we were thing. Love letter, you guys ever played Love Letter? No. No, I haven't heard of that. I think I've heard it's, of it, though. It's so goddamn fast, and this guy that was playing with us was like, it got to the point where, like, I waited, we waited so long that I forgot whose turn it was. <laughs> God. And I was just like, who the fuck is taking so fucking long? <laughs> In one letter, you literally draw two cards and pick one to play. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 20 cards in a deck? It's the smallest game ever. <laughs> 20 cards in the deck. It's, it's, it's a really awesome game. You guys should look it up. It's really cheap. We like cheap. I have seen it. I, I think it comes in a bag. I don't need to pitch for Fantasy Flight, though. That's it, you do. AG, screw those guys. I don't need to help. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love you, AG. You yeah, yes, you money. should help us. Yes. And give us money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, All right. All right. So. So let's take us out. Speaking of screwing everybody, you screwed away another freaking forty-five minutes okay. listening to guys, games, and beer. But before also, we finish, also, go ahead. That's your job. That is my. I have one job on this show. Let me do my damn job. All right. And again, your website is. It's www.cardboardfortressgames.com. And the game is going to be Kickstarter approximately when? 
We're hoping, hoping January 2015. All right, and we will definitely, when the, when you do kickstart, we will definitely have links. We really want to see this game in production. We are all dying, chomping at the bit for this one, so. Yeah, check us out on Facebook also. We have a site for Resistor, uh, Resistor game, and we have a site for Cardboard Fortress. And we post uh, questions sometimes there and get some feedback. And they've got some cool pictures on their Facebook website of the game. So. Yeah, you can see our dumb faces. <laughs> <laughs> but I know I, I have already Yay! I have already pasted on our Facebook as part of the B Fig pictures pictures of their game. Yep. And oh, were yeah, they pictures of you sobbing? Yes, it was Larry. And we also have some pictures of, of Larry sobbing and my foot. On no, his chest. no, Larry was actually very cavalier <laughs> afterwards. Rob was just insufferably smug. Yeah, <laughs> coming from that guy, dude. And the grass was green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh, I almost closed it up, but hey, uh, don't forget, links will be, of course, on Facebook and our website. Thanks for watching another, or listening, I'm sorry, most of you listen, <laughs> to another episode of Guys, Games, and Beer. We Again, always thank you, Carver Push Games. Thanks for coming yeah, cheers. in. Cheers. 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 Oh, yeah, you are. Come visit us at www.guysgamesandbeer.net. Win free games on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash guysgamesandbeer.